Welcome to a brand new video. Now, what is the role of the shoulders in the golf swing? It's probably an area that you've never looked at on YouTube. It's probably an area that you've never really thought of in your golf swing, but it's vitally important to getting speed, getting accuracy and consistency in your golf game. But don't take this from me. We've got Nat back on the channel. We're gonna be talking about the role of the shoulders in the golf swing. Right now, I think the best place to start with this is probably the areas in which we see people make some silly mistakes. So yes. I'm gonna have a golf club, I'm gonna highlight them, but then we wanna hear from you okay. on uh, what's actually happening with the body. Because yeah. I think if people can understand this, then you can probably improve upon it. Absolutely, yeah. That's the key, I think, is to, to knowing your own body first and you yeah. can make some improvements from that. So. I think you've got to put yourself, and, and don't forget, actually smash those comments. Are you move one or move two when we're looking at this? A little bit this way yep. in the back swing, common. common one. Yes. And we actually find that I see something that correlates with that is not a lot of turn on the body. Yep. And then, new tool. <laughs> 1900s <laughs> cricket bat. <laughs> the oldest cricket bat known <laughs> is that sort of forward defensive, sort yeah. of chicken wing move on the way through, and again, a real lack of rotation of the body. So, yeah. we've all tried drills, we've all tried everything, but why do people always seem to do this, always seem to do that? And don't forget, at the end of the video, I do have a new drill for you. So Matt, why do we, why okay. do we do it? There can be a few reasons for this. Okay. So I think the first thing to highlight, which is important, is if people have had injuries to the shoulder joint specifically yep. or to areas of the spine, that can then impact their movement as a golfer. That's what we'd kind of just put in isolation as that's a specific thing to one particular person but will have happened to many golfers. Yep. That may impact their ability to create rotation and turn depending on how serious that injury's been and how well they've recovered. But if we look at kind of the most common and things that, that we see in a lot of golfers and that are, are very fixable. Posture has to be the first thing. So that's as standing as best yeah. we can over the golf ball exactly. nice and athletically. So if we look at, if I get you to make a hunchback position in your posture, and we see this in a lot of senior golfers, so we've had this like C position at the top of the spine here, automatically both your shoulders internally rotate, so they come in towards the chin, which closes the joint slightly, and therefore makes it very difficult for your shoulder blades to sit naturally on the rib cage and mm -hmm. on the spine. And that makes it hard for then the joint itself here to rotate as it should do in neutral. Yeah, I can feel that like actually. Sense. All of a sudden you're like, I've got nowhere to go here. Everything's so, compressed, everything's rounded, everything's tight. You complete it a little in, bit like In that. order to try and get into some sort of position in the swing, we have to get out of that, that roundedness by lifting the spine or bringing the elbow up to try and get some action from the shoulder here, if that makes sense. Yeah, to try and get a bit of feeling of power. It's, exactly. It's, this has got to happen, yeah. not... This exactly happening. that. So posture is probably the first thing to look at as a check for yourself to make sure if, I, if I'm stood to the ball, am I like this? Because look what this did to my natural posture of the upper spine. Automatically, you know, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage before you go anywhere. Yeah, so we're looking for a bit more of this, not this. Yep, correct. Okay, and yep. then is there anything around this, let's go trail shoulder to begin with, and yep. we will look at the lead shoulder. Like, is there anything around that, that in general? Um, in terms of the shoulder joint itself and how it works, if you think if I sort of face the camera this way and my shoulder is neutral from here, it has to make a few motions in order to make a, a circle. Yeah. So if I'm raising like this, we flex. And if I make a circle motion like this and I come around myself, you can see how now like the actual shoulder faces the opposite way. My yeah. hand is the other way from where I started. Yeah. It's, it's a ball and socket <laughs> joint, yeah, yeah. which effectively looks like this. Yeah, yeah. So it's rotating within okay. a capsule, within a circle. And in a lot of people, some of those rotations are missing. So I describe this to my clients, if you imagine a clock face, 12, yeah. 6, 3, 9. Yeah. Ideally, we'd like to see your shoulder touch every number of the clock. But for some people, their numbers are missing. They might only, might only be able to make 12 to 6. Or they might only be able to make 12 to 3. That's and therefore, hard. we have to have a compensation in, ah, in okay. using the lower arm to get height in the golf swing. And create and finish yeah. off a backswing that looks a reasonable length. Exactly, and that can come from just poor mobility, lack of movement, lack of understanding of the movement, knowing that actually this should should be a natural motion for, for every human being, providing we've not got any injury or something that's preventing you doing that. Very, very interesting. So the shoulder has to 
rotate and glide in order to allow a set position to happen. My shoulder here is in a different position than where it started here. I think a lot of people probably get tense, lock it in and, yeah. and feel like it's got to stay where it is. So mobility of the joint capsule itself is huge and I know that sounds quite sciencey and a bit detailed but actually in terms of exercises it's very simple in yeah. how to feel more mobile. In the same way we talk about the hips being able to create these motions that if they don't make them all of a sudden we have to do the sway opposite. and slide. Okay so let's now jump to a different perspective and look at this bit on the way through. I know <laughs> you're all probably wanting to talk about that. <laughs> So now, we're all looking for this feeling. I know what I get it. It's like it's like this in the golf swing. But a lot of us, quick it back again. I'm yep. not gonna get it out because I've been told it's too old. <laughs> we all get sort of this motion. Yeah. So why does that occur? Is it very similar to what you've said about this? Yeah, it's a similar motion to the downswing, sorry, the backswing. So in the downswing, we're looking for the same action. This time we're looking for this kind of folding position here coming through. And again, this relies on that motion of the shoulder being able to create that mobility internally and externally. So in terms of the shoulder joint coming this way connected to my spine. Yeah. And if I can't rotate that joint this way, my option is to buckle out of it a little bit because that doesn't want to go there, so it'll move laterally to a certain degree. Right. So in, in essentially what you're saying is if you don't have any external rotation like this, because you've got momentum in this direction, we've got to compensate and find yeah. this. So you could so many golfers look at this channel and go, oh, actually I want to get my hands ahead of the golf ball. Well actually yeah. that's probably never going to happen if you don't have exactly. the ability to facilitate this. Yeah, 100%. And I think this is where the role of the shoulder blade becomes really apparent in the sense that it's still really important in the backswing as well yeah. in how we create this fold. But certainly in the downswing, if you think about the position of your shoulder blades on the rib cage, they then connect into the shoulder joint and down into the lower arm as that's connected to the shoulder. If my shoulder blade is winged off this way in terms of that natural posture, it's much harder for me to make this motion because I'm already in a place I'm trying to get to. You can't go somewhere you already are. Yeah. So this is where strength is really important as well. Strength in the upper back to keep the shoulder blades set in their position, which allows that joint to be neutral and have full range of motion. Okay, so a lot of this is to do with some basic things really. Yeah. To give you the best chance of getting this right. Absolutely. I think as we touched on posture, yeah. that has to be your first starting point. Get yourself in as much of a neutral place as you can be because then you've got somewhere to go to. Yeah. Strength of the, the, uh, the core or the trunk and particularly the upper back to maintain those shoulder positions and having the mobility to get to the places you want to get to. That, so that's all the knowledge that you need to access this. But what I'm going to say to you here is a feeling to add to your golf swing. So we do have some, and Nat has, and we have some really exciting news coming, which we'll tell you about in a minute, um, in terms of exercises you could do specifically in the gym. But what I want you to get the feeling of is get into your goal posture and as Nat said, make sure it's athletic. Correct. And get the feeling of holding a tray, back, holding a tray and through. Just to get the feeling of what the arms are having to do in isolation and then do it together slowly increase that, do some reps at home, so then you get on the golf course. It would look very much, if we did that drill in isolation, more of this, yeah, more of this. Yeah. Okay, let's put it together. I would actually have a few waggles, a little bit of sort of Justin Thomas style, feeling this, not this, good posture, shoulders back. And actually you nice. feel like you can actually release the club. Yeah, it's a bit more fluid, isn't it? You don't feel like there's that level of yeah, tension that the same. Feeling of this yeah. rather than this yeah. in the golf swing. And I think a lot of this is in golf coaching, I find this, that understanding the concept and the role of something actually allows you to have a better chance of implementing it. Yeah, I think it's that understanding of knowing why is this happening? Physically, what can I feel? You know, how can I change that? And then bringing the technique into that aspect. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Now, I mentioned something very exciting. So, we've mentioned this in previous videos, but Off Scratch is launching in the next, say, few weeks? Hopefully, few weeks. We'll say few weeks. We'll give you more information on this exact date closer to it. But this is combining golf coaching 
goal fitness, bringing plans together to actually help you improve physically and then improve out on the golf course in terms of your scores and the quality of how you hit it. We're excited, aren't we? I can't wait for this. I think it's going to be really good. Nice, nice merge of the two things together. Exactly. I know you all love these videos on YouTube. These are going to be in more depth with some plans, with some documents that go with it, and we can't wait to share it with you.